The interesting thing here, Connor, though, is Jacoby Myers, who I think that when you think about, obviously, there's familiarity between Myers and McDaniels from their time together in New England. The expectation here is that he's going to play the slot. I know he plays some outside, but feels like this absolutely kills whatever remnants of fantasy value Hunter Renfro had left. He had a bad year last year, but some of that was injury. But also, like, I'm a little nervous about Darren Waller here who already comes in the season on the wrong side of 30, having had injuries pretty badly the last couple of years. Like, as much as Darren Waller is one of my favorite players in the NFL. I love Darren Waller. But, you know, there's only so many balls to go around. It's still going to be, I think, a conservative run-first offense, you know, or at least a balanced one. And so Waller, who's had injury uh, concerns, who's going to, you know, Myers is going to get a decent amount of targets. Obviously, Adams is going to get his. Feels like Waller's now in that second tier of tight ends. He's no longer, I mean, like, it's Kelsey, right? Kelsey and Andrews, if you want to say it there. And then you've got, like, Hawkinson and and some of the other, Kittle, right? But, like, then it feels like then it's another tier before you get to, like, the Darren Wallers and the Dalton Schultz of the world. Yep. Jay, and you have to wonder, right, like, who could be on the move? Here. Do we really think this offense that has a ton of skill town now with Adams, Myers, you hinted at it with Hunter Renfro. We've heard weird rumblings for a long time about Waller potentially going elsewhere. One of those guys also could end up somewhere else with this signing. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I wouldn't expect that all of those guys are going to be on the team. It doesn't really make sense to have Hunter Renfro as your fourth you know, guy in the passing game. I think as well, like a good thing is um, for Josh Jacobs is that Jimmy is probably going to keep games close enough where you know Jacobs can still be running the ball. And we saw that you know Jacobs was, you know, he won the rushing title. He was the best running back in football, arguably alongside Christian McCaffrey, when they weren't really playoff relevant towards the end of the season. So I think that Jacobs should still stay relevant. Jacobs, by the way, friend of the award-winning Fantasy Football Happy Hour yes, podcast. Correct. We, we interviewed him at the Super Bowl. Jay good friend and I of mine. Did. Good friend. Good yeah. friend of Jay's. Yeah. Acquaintance of mine. Yes. Uh, a, good, <laughs> a good show to uh, attach yourself to. Yeah. I'm yeah. hearing. Well, award-winning. Good job by Josh. By the way, he's yeah. the award-winning Josh Jacobs because yeah. he won Literally. the he won the FedEx Ground. Yeah. Uh, award for uh, for winning the rushing title. Yes, and you could argue he was the most memorable player in the Hall of Fame game. So he's yes. that's, there's a lot going on with lot, Josh Jacobs. A lot going on. I, like, could Darren Waller be on the move? Sure, maybe. I mean, the problem is, is we have no idea what the Raiders are doing, and I don't think they yeah. do. Uh. I wonder if this move, when you look at the structure of the contract, which is far from guaranteed across all three years, they could essentially get out of this deal after a year or two. Does this signal that the Raiders are going to draft a quarterback in the top ten? And that, from a dynasty perspective, is really interesting because this is a friendly offense for a rookie quarterback that won't have to play right away until Jimmy gets hurt in week six or whatever it may be. That's an interesting domino here. It feels like they almost have to be. I mean, I I think it's going to be a quarterback-heavy draft at at the very top, so we'll see, like, who's available when they pick. But it feels like it almost has to be that Josh McDaniels is like, listen, he's going to be a bridge. Garoppolo's a solid veteran that will keep us, you know, reasonably competitive, but I want to bring in my guy and sort of uh, develop somebody. The fact that they let Stidham go, along with pushing Carr out, makes me think yeah. that they have to go out and get somebody else. And, you know, listen, they're, they've are they got a you know reasonably good draft pick this year. So, speak, if I were there was a year. And speaking of the draft, a blockbuster move at the end of last week, guys, that does impact the fantasy environment for one specific player. The Bears trade the number one pick two months before the draft. They send it to Carolina. Uh, They get the ninth pick in the draft, a 2024 first, a 2023 second round pick. That is number 61. It's not the earlier of their second round picks. And a 2025 second. And DJ Moore. DJ Moore is the noteworthy player involved in this trade. We all know Carolina moved up for a quarterback. That's going to be a long conversation for a different day. But DJ Moore, who rode the quarterback wave of misery last year, like few wide receivers, now goes to an offense that it's not pass happy with Justin Fields, but maybe a little bit more stability for him. What do you think of Moore in Chicago? And does it really change anything at all? I think it helps him, honestly. Like, I mean, I think, look, DJ Moore has been one of the best wide receivers in the NFL since he came to the league, since 2019. Uh, he has been, let's be kind here, I'm feeling generous, and just say that he's had inconsistent quarterback play. At a minimum. At, In his time at Carolina, I would argue that Justin Fields is the best quarterback that D.J. Moore has ever played with, that he will be. Um, And so since 2019, D.J. Moore, total points, wide receiver 13 on a fantasy football basis. And I think that's about right. I think he's probably like a low-end wide receiver one with this move. Touchdowns have always been an issue with him, but he's going to be the number one 
uh, the number one option on an offense that we think is going to be a lot better. Like they're 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 fortifying the offensive line in Chicago, uh, adding DJ Moore, getting Darnell Mooney back healthy, a full year of Chase Claypool, Cole Komet is emerging. Like again, it's not murder's row, but it's also not the complete disaster that it was towards the end of last year when they're rolling out Dante Pettis and Equinomia St. Brown. Like I mean, at least there's like some professional wide receivers out there. I mean. Darnell Mooney's probably not your ideal two. He's probably a better as a three, but maybe they draft somebody. Maybe they bring somebody in. But the fact of the matter is, is DJ Moore is a legit NFL number one wide receiver. When you consider Justin Fields' legs and his ability in his second year in this offense behind a better offensive line, my expectation is Justin Fields is, you know, remains a top five fantasy quarterback. There were questions about whether, is that a little too high for him? I don't think so. I think you can make an argument for him as high as four after Mahomes, Allen, and Jalen Hurts. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think you could certainly make an argument for him over Justin Herbert, you know, over Kyler, over Lamar, depending on what happens with him. Like, I, th- I think he's probably QB4. And I think he has the most upside of any quarterback um, that there is just because the rushing is so insane. And I don't think any of us would be surprised if he ends the season as the number one fantasy quarterback, which he was for stretches of last season. I couldn't be higher on the Bears. I love this team now. They're now they're, they got the same odds as the Vikings to win the division uh, in the NFC North. And I think that that is well-founded. And now this team all of a sudden, the thing, Connor, with Fields is that he, in college, is very accurate. Yeah. Right? And that just hasn't Truly. really translated to the NFL yet. But there's so much context that would suggest that that's not necessarily his fault with the offensive line, with the skill work, um, position players. And now the fact that he's got those three guys, he's got a legit one in more. And then Mooney and Claypool are fine as supporting pieces. So we've got the great Cole Komet. Uh, and I think that, you know, with cap space, with an O-line, all of a sudden, like, he is primed to take a huge leap. Yeah. But, yeah. And, uh, go ahead. You no, and now, now we can see what they do in the draft where those odds that you've been high on will only go up because they still have a top 10 pick. They can get an offensive tackle at that spot. They can take Jackson Smith and Jigba if they really want to give yeah. Justin, uh, Justin Fields an old friend. So the draft, they've, they've restocked their draft ammo and got a pro-ready player and more where they're ready to roll. I thought this was an awesome, like I get why Carolina made the move. Like they've been kind of in the quarterback desert yeah. for so long and they felt like they're what, they weren't going to get their guy at nine. So they, yeah. they had to sort of, you know. It's and, the price. It, the price is the price. The, that's the, the price of doing business. So I, I don't mind the move for the Panthers. Felt like they overpaid a little bit, but the price is the price, right? You know, who knows what they were competing with. But I love the move for the Bears. Like it's an unbelievable haul for Ryan Poles. Congratulations. And uh, to your point, like, like honestly, the picks would have been enough. Nine yeah. sixty-one, a first next year, a, uh, a second in two years. You know, down the road. Honestly, the picks I'd have been like, that's a fair trade. That's a pretty sure. good haul. But then you add in DJ Moore. Again, remember Justin Fields' first year was with Matt Nagy, who was that was just a disastrous situation. And so now last year was his first year in a new offense. And we've seen this before. Again, Justin Fields. Going into his third season, what happened last year? We talked about this in the preseason. Jalen Hurts going into his third year, his second year in Sirianni's system, they gave him a better offensive line, and they gave him A.J. Brown to go along with, you know, another year of Devontae Smith, and it's why he was my ride or die. Like, Justin Fields, it might be too obvious, you know, but like, there's a chance Justin Fields is my fantasy ride or die heading into the season. Again, he might be too obvious of a name at this point now, but um, I, I just think – to your point about the accuracy issues, like I think adding a guy like DJ Moore does a lot for a guy's accuracy yes. issues and fortifying the offensive line and giving the guy a couple of seconds to throw also helps your accuracy issues. Yep. I'm staking myself to the Chicago Bears. I'm all in Bears. I think they win the division. The upgrades they've made on defense with Tremaine Edmonds, TJ Edwards, those are legit pieces. They had Nate Davis on the yep. offensive line. They've still got cap space. They've got the draft equity. Like this team could be absolutely loaded. And Fields, fantasy wise and real life wise, has just so much upside. And I think that yeah, they, they can be a double digit win team. You know what? And by the way, you also think about you think about that division to your point. So uh, I think you know everyone's like the Lions are the trendy pick. Everyone loves the Lions. It's a great story. Dan Campbell's great at the press conference, and there's a lot of nice pieces there. And they're going to get Jamison Williams back a full year of that, so that'll be fun for the Lions. But like, it's still a defense that has some question marks. Like, and the Lions still have you know the Lions just weren't terrible last year. Like they were competitive, but they weren't like awesome and amazing and unbeatable. And so to your point, like. Assuming the Packers lose Aaron Rodgers, as of this taping, we don't know what the status yet is of Aaron Rodgers, like the rest of the universe. Um, And, you know, the Vikings are, you know, 
like Vikings feel like a little bit of a paper tiger, you know what I mean? Like, or a paper lion, yeah. paper Viking, if you want. Like, um, not correct. Uh, <laughs> look, it's the off season, <laughs> whatever. They're not all winners. We already won the award. We already won the award. Paper, I don't need to come with the A material. Paper the Viking. fact is, okay. the fact is, is that, you know, they won all those one score games. The Every bounce went their way yes, last year. Does one. that continue this year? I like the bet on the on the Bears to what's the odds of bet MGM? Plus three hundred. Plus three hundred to win the division. I kinda like those odds to, yep. you know, throw a saw buck down. Yep. Or a couple. Matt Eberflus as well. He is uh, to me he should be favorite for coach of the year. Uh, on bet MGM he's not. It's Dan Campbell is the favorite for coach of the year. I just think he has People's a higher coach. bar uh, to clear. Eberflus is plus twelve hundred. And so, I mean, do you think that he is more than a uh, one in four chance to win coach of the year if he wins the division? Like, yes, absolutely. Right. Um, yeah, probably and more like a one in, I think it's like a 50% chance if he takes the Bears from the worst record that's in the, the league. That's the The number one pick, right? See, that's so always the, the key. Narrative. Division winner. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. And a big market. And a big is, market. We and know. a big market with a star quarterback. That's the key. I'm with you. I like that, Jay Crouch. You're not bad. Thank you, Matthew. So, so you, so you do this. Barry. Yeah. For a living. <laughs> when you go to bed at GM. <laughs> Jay, quickly, the, the fallout in Carolina, which the fantasy impact, I mean, what is there to say? DJ Moore was stuck there and, and couldn't do a lot with their situation. We know they're drafting a rookie quarterback. What does this offense do, though, for a rookie quarterback? They have stability on the offensive line. They've done a good job of that over the years and in free agency this week. But the skill talent is kind of bare bones right now. Yeah, I think that the fact that the O-line is solid and they have a decent running game, that means it's not going to be a total disaster. Good coaching, the, too. Yeah, good coach. Yeah, I'm, I'm pro. I'm buying Frank Reich stock yep. uh, as well. I think he's a great play caller. But, I mean, yeah, there's just there's nothing there. There's no weapons. Like yeah. maybe DJ Moore would have helped out the rookie um, quarterback, who now Connor... Looks like it's going to be CJ Stroud, who's minus 250 on BetMGM to be the number one pick. And also, Anthony Richardson has shorter odds than Bryce Young. It's crazy. So apparently, uh, yeah, everyone's out on Bryce Young. If you were Scott Fitterer, general manager of the Carolina Panthers, you now have the number one pick. Who are you taking? I would take Bryce Young. Really? Uh, yeah, I would take Bryce Young. I think he's the best quarterback. I understand the size concerns, but they have a good offensive line, so you don't think he's going to get battered right away. I think the timing, the ability to play in rhythm, enough mobility, that would be the guy I would, I would take. He would flourish under Reich. I think a lot of these guys would. Uh, Richardson has a long road to go where if they take Richardson and just throw him into the fire, that's the most dangerous situation to me. But the argument there is, um, the argument there is, is like, listen, we're not going to be good this year. We know we're not going to so be good this year. So we can be patient. So, you know, we can be patient. Yes. And you know what? Hey, Richards, what's better way to learn is it's, it's like, yeah, it's going to be ugly and there's going to be some growing pains, but yeah. get out there and you're going to play all you're going to play all 17 games. And by the way, we'll have a high draft pick next year. Yep. And, um, you know, and the Bears will get one of them. But um, <laughs> uh, the Bears will get our first round pick next year. That's the brilliant speed of it, by the way, is the Panthers are going to be brutal next year. I'm like, yeah. the Bears not only got like, you know, um, the ninth, the number nine pick this year. Top 10 They're, they're going to get a top 10 pick next year. It's a good place to be. It's, I mean, like, that's the, like, it's not a protected pick or anything like no. that. It's, no, uh, you know, Which I it, love about NFL trades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, it's like. More of a the, dice roll. Exactly. Yes. I mean, it's, um, but anyway, I could see a scenario where they're just like, you know, both Anthony Richardson and Bryce Young are both, you know, from the South, obviously. So obviously big fan bases with, you know, Alabama. And anyway, so I don't know. It's, it, it'd be interesting to see what they do. You yeah. would take Bryce Young, but it seems like, feels like the winds but I don't are, think they do. are yeah. blowing towards C.J. Stroud. Well, yeah. I mean, he's minus 250, which is pretty aggressive in the market. That means that, you know, BetMGM thinks that there's more than a 70% chance for C.J. Stroud. But at the same time, minus 250 isn't minus 5,000. So there are lots of turns in this market. Like, no one thought, uh, including bookmakers, no one thought Trayvon Walker was going one until pretty late in the piece last season. But, yeah, seems like yeah, it's going to Yeah, draft odds are very advantageous in early March. It's yep. April that you start to lose that advantage because they're all yep. based on mock drafts and rumors and not necessarily. And mock drafts are fun. terrible. I mean, like, and I love the people that do the mock drafts, and it's really hard. It's a really, really hard. And There's a lot of thing them to do. There's a lot of them out there, but you know, again, like I told you, like I saw one a week ago or two weeks ago that had the Commanders taking Anthony Richardson at 16, and mm. I, even I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that's not going to happen. Yeah. And then like, that's, Anthony a, that's an October mock draft, right? Exactly. Yes. There's, there's there's a chance Anthony. Uh, there's a better than average chance Anthony Richardson doesn't get out of the top five. Oh, I think it's going. At the end of the day, the draft will go quarterback, 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 and maybe quarterback. <laughs> right. Arizona will trade the third overall pick, maybe to the Raiders. We could have a four quarterback in a row draft. Yeah. I really, I'm bracing for that. Okay. So when that yeah. opens up on the odds, yeah, jump on it. I like it. Let's continue the quarterback talk with the lesser of moves, guys. Yesterday, this week, top of this week was backup quarterback day. 
Yeah. All of them went off the market essentially right away. Uh, the first one being Mike White to Miami. I think this is maybe the most notable one. Barry, I, I'd ask you that because it's your guy. Your my, guy. My guy, Mike Epp and right. White. We, right. uh, we loved him on the show until right. we didn't, Jets, until he right. got hurt. Right. So the Dolphins, with Tua's health status, go out and secure a, a backup that they think could play in a pinch if he needs to and honestly most likely will at some point. Yeah, I mean, he had four starts last year. He averaged almost 300 yards. You know, look, can run an offense. And I think yeah. that's the key is that – my guess is that McDaniel said, like, okay, especially because, by the way, what they've done is they've spent on defense, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Like, um, they really just need a – if Tua's not uh, healthy, uh, they just need a game manager, honestly, because their defense is going to be so good, and they have so many skilled players in guys like Waddle and Hill that, like, just – all I need is a guy that can get a ball to somebody in rhythm. Yep. Same Just offense, too. Same offense, yeah, right, Florida, exactly. Florida, McDaniel, all, all under Kyle Shanahan. Right. All, it's all kind of that Shanahan West Coast stuff. And so this makes a lot of sense for the Dolphins. I love what the Dolphins have done this offseason so yeah. far. And, um, by the way, this is a nice story for Mike White. Just as a – like, just – Somebody that sort of kicked around the league that is, by all accounts, a, a great dude, great yep. locker room dude. I interviewed him once, and I, I loved the guy. Like, I thought he was really charming and personable and, um, uh, you know, didn't take himself too seriously. Coming out of, I believe, Western Kentucky, right? Yeah, yeah and he's a Florida man by right. heart. Yeah, so. Yeah, yeah so. Florida anyway. man signs with Dolphins. They have Florida man signs with Dolphins. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, happy for Mike White, and it feels like a, a smart move to get a um, – not expensive, but, you know, solid backup for Tua. Yeah, and I think outside of probably San Francisco, the Miami offense is probably the easiest to run, right, just in terms of just getting the ball to Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddell. And I think that White just being able to do that at a higher level than – I know Teddy was on the team, but he was constantly hurt as well. To do it at a higher level than Skylar Thompson, uh, he's someone who's going to be able to, you know, get the plays right. on time, which they weren't able to do in the playoffs. Yeah, and by the way, Skylar Thompson, I mean, like, think about that playoff game against Buffalo. They were like – they were like one call going their way. Yeah. I mean, like, you uh, one know, play like away from winning that game, from winning that game. And like, you know, some of the stuff with the, you know, the getting the plays in, it was just some weird stuff there. But like Skylar Thompson went into Buffalo and gave them a chance because he'd had a week where they coached him up. And so, right. Somebody, somebody like Mike White, who's been in that system, basically that system for, you know, an, uh, a, a few years. Yeah, you, you feel good about uh, where the Dolphins are. I think the Dolphins as well. They, I think they might be a juggernaut hiding in plain sight because they bring in Fangio, they bring in Jalen Ramsey. That defense, defense is stacked defense now. Defense is good. Defense is absolutely stacked. And on the other side, they've got Tua, who was in the MVP conversation briefly last season, and Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle. And, you know, when Teron Armstead is in there, they're much more solid. So, yeah, I, that, that, that team could easily win the AFC East and just be a juggernaut. The fascinating storyline will be who's their starting running back because at the moment they don't have one. Like, they, I mean, they signed Mostert this morning. Oh, so. I did not see yep, that. that okay, came, brought, it probably came in when we sat okay. down. Oh, God. Yep. Okay. So they bring it back Raheem Mostert, who was a free agent. But, you know, and we'll see Jeff Wilson, I believe, also a free agent. I believe so. I believe so that's there's, correct. There's carries there. There's to be carries had. there to be had. So we'll see. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Raheem must start. We'll be good. Jay, how about Sam Darnold going to San Francisco on a one-year deal? The Niners, we don't know when Brock Purdy. See, this is why you have to show up to the meetings, Jay, because <laughs> yeah. now you get to talk about Sam Darnold. Yeah, yeah, yeah I give you the good up on time, yeah, yeah, you wouldn't be stuck with Darnold. Listen, yeah. Sam Darnold was pretty good for Carolina, right? Yeah, a couple Towards of the games. Season. Yeah, he, did, he kind of kept yeah. it going. They were in the mix for playoff spot late because of Sam Darnold. He was the best quarterback that they had last year. He was better than Baker Mayfield. <laughs> what a uh, race. In terms of <laughs> and, uh, and P.J. Walker. So, I mean, it's fine. Like, he's not – if Sam Darnold's heavily involved, in the San Francisco season then they're probably in big trouble anyway but I mean Donald's been in rough situations like the Jets wasn't the best situation the Panthers wasn't the greatest situation either and now all of a sudden he's in the best situation in American sports being in Kyle Shanahan's offense with that O-line and those weapons so if he has to play for two or three games because Lance goes down or whatever then I think he'll they'll be fine by the way it, it, it might be two or three games it might be zero games it might be 17 games. No. I, I mean, <clears throat> I'm going to go contrarian here because it's easy to bag on Sam Darnold. I get it, right? And the ghosts and the whole thing, right? Ghosts and killed I know, it. Right? Absolutely killed it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> killed it. But so now he goes with no expectations. But he goes to an offense that, again, just got Jimmy Garoppolo paid, that took Brock Purdy, who some draft analysts said he was overdrafted as the, you know, the Mr. Irrelevant. Like, you know, he was a guy that came out of college and a lot of people said, like, this guy is not a pro-level player. And he went 6-0, and you know, in the regular season with Brock Purdy. 
Sam Darnold was a guy that was a top, I think he was the number two overall pick, right? When he came out, I three. believe. Yep. Number three. Right so after, he was three Saquon. after Saquon, right? Sorry. Um, yeah, he was the third overall pick. And no one at the time was like, what are the Jets doing? That guy? Like, you know, based on the college tape, USC, like people liked Sam Darnold coming out of college. And so there is some level of skill in there somewhere. Sure. We've seen him. It has been inconsistent, Jay Croucher. But we have seen moments of good quarterback play from Sam Darnold. We have. Like, there have been moments with the Jets. There have been moments with the Panthers the last two years. Now, there's been a lot more bad than good. But how much is that on him? I, I just think it's a, it's a no-risk situation. And my point is, is that Kyle Shanahan won with Brock freaking Purdy. So, like, my expectation is, is that the starting quarterback of the Niners is either going to be Trey Lance or Brock Purdy, assuming health for all of them. But it is not out of the realm of possibility that he resurrects Sam Darnold's career. And Sam Darnold, who's healthy and gets a full offseason with Kyle and still has a skill set, like, you know, Trey Lance has played one of our three games in his NFL career, yep. right? You know, Brock Purdy maybe doesn't have the, the all the all the skills that Sam Darnold. Like, are we convinced Brock Purdy's better than Sam Darnold at this point in their careers? I mean, he probably is, but certainly it's not out of the realm of possibility. I mean, seven, eight games ago, San Francisco lifetime-wise, everyone would have thought that Sam Darnold's a better quarterback than Brock Purdy. So it's a very small sample size for Purdy. And we've also still got no idea if Trey Lance is any good or not. Just absolutely right. yeah. no idea. Or if he'll be able to play. Yeah. That's another consistent issue as well. So, I mean, listen, all Sam's mistakes are mental. And the point of Kyle's offense is to do that work for you. If right. you have the physical talent and do what I tell you to do, we will be fine. So it will be interesting to watch if Darnold has to play and what he could do with it. I'm just saying that there's a non-zero chance. There's not, like, you know what? What are Sam Darnold's odds for a comeback player oh, of the year? I was, I'm looking MVP. I'm going, <laughs> I'm going further. Uh, I'll find out the comeback player of the year odds. I mean, I think DeMar Hamlin is going to win that award, yeah. uh, I suspect, if, yeah, he, if he does play again. But right. certainly Sam Darnold, yeah, if he's the starting quarterback of the Niners. Also, if... Kyle Shanahan, Shanahan goes 15-2 and two with Sam Darnold. Can we just give him a coach of the year, finally? He's never won one. It's, it's unbelievable. It's no, un it is insane. Your boy, Matt it is Eberflus. insane. Yeah, I'm, just, sure. I'm just saying, like, I mean, I think everyone just you know, like, sort of yawns at Sam Darnold. There is a non-zero chance that Sam Darnold is very fantasy relevant this year. Or maybe not very, but fantasy relevant this year. Sure. As the quarterback of the 49ers. Yep. How about Jared Siddham turning – a final, basically one game is what he turned into a two-year, $10 million contract with the Broncos. Sean Payton gets his backup quarterback. The Broncos' plan, pretty clear, invest as much as they can into blockers and a backup quarterback. I don't know what that means for Russ. I think it means to help him. But Stidham, this is a good contract for a guy that was basically an afterthought until he played at the end of last year. It's a good contract for a guy that, right, was an afterthought. The other thing that's interesting is, again, They've got a quarter of a billion dollars invested in their starting quarterback. You would think they would just be like, okay, who can we get for the league minimum? Yep. Right? But the fact that it's a two-year deal um, for, I believe, $10 million, as you see it there on your screen, right? Um, uh, two years, $10 million each, right? Uh, so, I don't know. Like, this is what I wrote in my Combine com that what I heard from my sources in and around Denver is that Russell Wilson is, in essence, on a one-year trial with Sean Payton. They're going to give it a go this year. They're going to try to fix him. But if they don't, it's like over. they can get rid yeah. of him next year with a, with a dead money hit that is not great. You know, but then they can spread it out over two years and it's not franchise killing. It'll be a, like a 40 million, uh, dead, 40 million dead cap hit for each of the next two years, which is obviously still awful, but not like, but you can survive that. You know, and so, you know, in, in a scenario like that, so they have Stidham under contract. So, okay, Stidham's the starter the next season, and then you're just you're basically breaking it down, and you're starting from scratch again uh, with with Sean Payton. So um, I thought I think it's just again, it's sort of they're going to try to make Russ work this year, but it's a short leash. He's yep. got one year. Looks like it is two, ten million total across oh, the two total. years. Sorry, um, yeah. But yeah, I think with Stidham, I mean, it all comes down to that game against San Francisco, which Nick Bosa basically said, yeah, we didn't really show up for that game. So there's that. But at the same time, Jeezy looked good. He looked good against the team, even though they weren't trying. He was making all the throws. So, yeah, I mean, there's still, at least there's, there's upside in Jarrett Stidham. So, you know, why not? You know, guys like, you know, not to take a shot in, but like Chad Henney. There's no upside in Chad Henney. At least there's upside in Jarrett right. Stidham. In fairness, Chad Henney's retired. So, yes, I would agree. <laughs> I'm just saying that he just retired. Player. But, yes, that's, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> C.J. Beathard, yeah, maybe. Yeah, C.J. Beathard, right. There you go. That's better. That's, That's where it should have Right, yeah, yeah, exactly. Paper Viking. Yeah, Nick, Nick Mullins. Viking. <laughs> yeah, Nick, Nick Mullins. Mullins. Yeah, he's a good one. He's out there somewhere. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. 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 All right. Curtis Painter, where are you at? <laughs> Uh, Jameis Winston goes back to the Saints on a one-year deal. Maybe a bit this of a surprise. I was very surprised by this. Not there's only not more of a market for Jameis as one a One year, $4 million, up to eight. And we know what – whenever you see up to in a contract tweet, folks, that means they basically have to win the Super Bowl and make it, be <laughs> right. an MVP. Yeah. So one year, $4 million for Jameis Winston to – Back up Derek Carr, Jay, which doesn't seem like a chance to play for Jameis Winston. He's gotten less than Jared Stidham, which I don't really understand. Jameis, I still don't understand why they didn't play him last year where Andy Dalton was throwing pick sixes for fun on national television, still couldn't get Jameis in. So, yeah, I don't really understand Jameis and not getting more of a chance. Like He's shown he's shown real, a solid level of quarterback play in the NFL. Uh, and I guess, I mean, Carr doesn't really get hurt, so I don't think that... You know, it's a weird him. one. I, I, unless there's something going on with Winston, or he just loves New Orleans, and he just like this. Yeah. Is they're like, listen, if you want to come back, it's we we can give you four. And he's just like, ah, I, I want to stay here because I love New Orleans for whatever reason. I don't know. It's it just feels weird that in a market right to your point in a market where Stidham's getting ten million for two years, and in a, in a market where Taylor Heineke's getting twenty million for two years. Yeah, we'll talk about him in a second. Like that, Winston couldn't do better than a. Four million one-year deal to back up Derek Carr to get to a situation where there's no chance of starting, as opposed to going to a situation like Carolina, like Atlanta, like there's other situations out there where you know that he would have had to compete, but there was a chance. I would have thought that he has higher standing in the league than Mike White, for instance, right? Yeah, but apparently not. Apparently uh, yeah, not. I don't know. It's it's a weird one. That's a yeah. weird one. You have to wonder if is the injury history worse than we know? What is it? Like you right. said, some guys just are comfortable. They like being a backup in an organization and a place they enjoy. Not everybody's the same, right? So, no. And that brings us to Taylor Heineke, who, a guy that we know loves to play. <laughs> and he got a good deal from the Falcons in a place that he can play. We don't, they're saying Desmond Ritter's the starter. And, but obviously, that, that's not concrete. This is a job that we think Taylor Heineke has a chance to, if not win, play at some point this year. The deal is a two-year deal worth up to $20 million, so a solid number here for Heineke. Barry, when you look at Heineke's fit in Atlanta, that they traded for Jonu Smith. Kyle Pitts is still there. Drake London should be a pretty damn good player in year two. Tyler Algier in the, in the backfield. They were able to shore up this offensive line. I mean, this might be another spot like Washington where Heineke finds himself starting throughout the year. It's a guy that's thrown over the last two years. He's thrown 32 touchdowns. He's thrown for, you know, over 5,000 yards over the course of, of, of two years. Like, he's a – and, I again, I say this with no disrespect. Like, he's a professional quarterback. Like, he's played his, his – this is a guy that couldn't get a snap in the XFL. Yeah. And he's played his way into being a – a guy that's worth $20 million over two years. Like, I don't think Desmond Ritter set the world on fire last year. And it's sort of interesting in Atlanta. Like, I I don't know that I would rank Desmond Ritter over Taylor Heineke. I mean, I guess if they come out and say, like, Redmond's, Ritter's definitely our starter. But, like, that's really high-end money for a backup. Like, that is like, hey, there's a chance you win this job and um, and or have to play significant snaps next year. Yeah, Money. I, there's just no way Taylor Heineke is better than Jameis Winston. Is there? Isn't Jameis Winston the better quarterback? I don't understand this at all. You yeah. have to play to get paid. Yeah, and, and that's mean, what Heineke's guess, done. He does. He does play. Heineke Heineke does not have the arm strength, but he's he's got that grit. Moxie. He has <laughs> moxie. moxie. He's got moxie coming yeah. out of his you know his out of his ears, and, right, and he's got you know he's like you know he's. Um, he's got, you know, very high T levels. Yes, I would he think, does. Yes, yes. yes, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, he's on a test booster, right. for sure. Just, look, I mean, like, he's an easy guy to root for, sure. I will say. Uh, he's mobile. They want to be run first in Atlanta. You know, they. we talk about John O. Smith here in a second. But, um, I, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't think, like, again, for people that are doing best ball drafts right now, I don't mind, like, a very late round pick on Sam Darnold or Taylor Heineke. Like, especially if you're in a super flex league, if you're in a deep league where you're going to play multiple quarterbacks, like both those guys, I don't mind, you know, taking a shot on. Cause I think there's a chance they see, you know, they see action this year and could be reasonably successful. 
Let's stay with the Falcons here for right. a sec because of the John U. Smith trade. The other thing is, just sorry, the last, yeah, last piece on Heineke is, I don't know that Heineke is a fantasy-relevant quarterback, right, in any kind of standard one quarterback league or, you know, 12. He's not. But, like, I think Heineke is, at worst, as good as Ritter and likely better in terms of getting the ball to Drake London, to Kyle Pitts, to keeping the offense in the field so that they can grind out, uh, grind out first down. So... I think it's a I think it's a good move for the Falcons uh, to get you know somebody that's you know decent uh, at not a ton of money, given the craziness of, of quarterback uh, prices. And then also, by the way, it's a great move for Taylor Heineke's career. Yeah, I think the thing as well with Heineke is that his issue is that he throws a lot of picks. Not as many last season, but the year before he threw fifteen. He threw right. six in nine games last year. Uh, for fantasy purposes. Well, it, that's okay because at least he does put up yards. He puts up, he makes a lot of throws and he misses a lot of throws. It's not like he's a game manager necessarily who's throwing for 170 yards and no picks and one touchdown or something. Like he does have some upside in just in terms of raw stats. But again, we like we saw the kind of the numbers that McLaurin put up uh, with him under center, and so I do think this is actually good news for uh, Drake London. I definitely do think, if Heineke can start, I do think it's good news for Drake London. On the commander's side of the ball, I mean, this basically, they wanted to bring him back. They wanted to bring him back at a price, but they wanted to bring him back. So they're now in the the market for a veteran to compete with Sam Howell. Who knows? Maybe that veteran will be Lamar Jackson. Who knows? (laughs) Lamar Jackson's a compete. Who knows? Why isn't James Winston on the commanders? Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So Who knows? The Falcons make a trade for Jonu Smith, who things didn't work out for him in New England the way everybody expected after a big free agency deal. Putting Jonu Smith aside, Barry, this is the question I have at the top. Is this good, bad, or a non-factor for Kyle Pitts? Uh, it remains to be seen, <laughs> candidly. I mean, like, obviously, there's familiar, there, Arthur Smith went on and wanted, wanted him. Jonu Smith's two best seasons were with Arthur Smith as his offense coordinator with the Tennessee Titans. And, look, when you're in two tight end sets, obviously, if Jonu Smith is going to do a lot of the blocking, that can free up Kyle Pitts to become more of a receiver um, and more of a move tight end. So that's the hope. But there's – I don't believe there's any logic to Kyle – you know, like – Based on everything I saw out of Arthur Smith's offense last year, I want to make no strong declarations here because who the F knows? Who the F knows what's going on in Atlanta, Jay Croucher? Yeah. I don't know. It could be awesome for Kyle Pitts. It could also be awful for Kyle Pitts. Yeah. I think the way to logically think about this is that if Kyle Pitts, if his role is being degraded because of Jonu Smith, then he's probably not that good anyway. <laughs> like, it's, it's all in Kyle Pitts' hands, right? He's the one who has the upside, and if he is good, then he's going to play a lot, we think. Because surely, I mean, you have to defer to the coaching. Yards as a, he had 1,000 yards as a rookie. It's not in his hands. He can't catch if they don't throw him the effing ball. It's just, I think you have to defer a little bit to the coach, right? I think Arthur Smith did a pretty good job overall last season. I don't really understand why they weren't throwing the ball more, but at the same time, he has to be seeing no, something listen, in I, practice. Well, I think he I think he realizes he doesn't have a quarterback, and he's like yeah. his best yeah. chance Mario at winning was, was to, like, he yeah. just, like, they just, we're going to try to run the ball and grind out these wins because that's our only shot. So I agree with you, actually. I think overall, Arthur Smith did a good job as the Falcons head coach in keeping them competitive in games. I mean, you know, let's be clear, you know, Panthers got screwed. They won one game they shouldn't have. <laughs> DJ Moore, come on, the helmet off. Like, come on, that was bull. That was ridiculous. But um, anyway, I don't know. Who knows with Arthur Smith? I agree with you. He did a good job. But for fantasy purposes, like, Kyle Pitts is either going to be the greatest bargain in fantasy this year, like a post-hype, because there's going to be so many people that are like, never again with Kyle Pitts, or it's just like, what could have been? It's still early enough with Pitts that you have to regress a little bit to the pedigree that he came out with and, the, and what he did show uh, in the first year. So I think that I think the Pitts is a... I think he's a buy. I mean, on a lot of reclamation projects. I mean, on Russell Wilson. I mean, on Kyle Pitts. Uh, I think that they're... Let me throw one more at you then. Yeah. Our last notable offensive move. The Texans signed Robert Woods to a two-year deal for $15.25 million. Does wow. it really matter? For Robert Woods there with the Texans. If they trade Brandon Cooks, this is his offense as the wide receiver. 
But ultimately, we also don't know who the quarterback's going to be. I'm out on Robert Woods. <laughs> I'm, uh, he's not, not the reclamation not, nah, project you were uh, hoping he's for? Not, he's not in my stable of reclamation projects. I think, like, if, How many if can he you still had something there. <laughs> You're a dad, father of three. <laughs> I know, yeah. You know, Woods isn't going to be my third reclamation project. I mean, if he didn't have it in Tennessee, and I get that he's going to be a year m more removed from the knee, which helps, but at the same time, like, there was no one else in that passing game, and they were in a lot of situations where they had to throw. Uh, so I, I just don't see it for, for Robert Woods, unfortunately. Matthew? Uh, I would agree with that. <laughs> um, I, you know, love me some Bobby Trees, but it's it's been a while. Like, he just – he looked he looked like, you know, an over-30 wide receiver yeah. coming off of a major injury last year. And I don't know that the situation – they'll have a young quarterback and they'll have to be throwing, but I don't know that it's going to be any better. They say they want to trade Brandon Cooks. We'll see if they actually do. Um, but, you know, they also – they have Nico Collins and, I don't know, like, feels like – you know, and, you know, Damian Pierce, I just feel, feels like if I'm the Texans, I'm going with a youth movement. And the Robert Woods one made no sense to me other than just like, hey, he's good veteran presence. He'll be in the good locker room guy, you know, better locker room guy than fantasy asset. Yep. Who are the Texans taking to if it's C.J. Stroud going Bryce. on? Bryce. Run, I think they'd Bryce. run in the okay. card. Yeah. Yep. And I also wonder if the Panthers, if they know that, are they enticed by a pick flip where they can just get something? Because they're like, you don't, you're not taking our guy. We'll flip picks with you, get something back that we can use to put around our guy. It's a little weird if Carolina does that. But they had to get up to number one to control the draft. But we, yeah, could, right. see, we could see a pick flip of one and two. That would be hilarious. Be shocked, if which Texans has a huge <laughs> impact on the betting market. <laughs> yeah. Because then Bryce goes number one. Yep. So that's why those odds are going to be all over the place in the okay. next So when the odds get released, Bryce Young to go uh, two is, uh, is a solid bet. Yeah, I th I th yep. and I think it'll be heavily favored okay. that way. Right. Interesting. Guys, a couple big money wow. defensive moves. Or Will Levis. Yeah. <laughs> your man, man. Your man, Will Levis. Yes. Right, my guy, guy, Will Levis. By the way, Madison, Connecticut's own Will Levis, by yes. the way. There you go. Right. Ma mayonnaise and coffee. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> yes. Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Draft stock down, mayo and coffee. <laughs> Notable Disagree. defensive moves. I'll read through them. I want you guys to pick out your favorite one here. Jalen Ramsey, we hinted at what the Dolphins have done. He's traded to Miami. He seemed elated by that move. Uh, Deron Payne, your boy, Matthew Berry, yeah. re-signs with Washington. They have a talented, expensive front four. Yeah. Javon Hargrave gets a massive deal with 49ers, speaking of a talented front four. Tremaine Edmonds, the young linebacker from the Bills, gets a monster deal from Chicago. After they trade Roquan Smith, they get Tremaine Edmonds in there. Jesse Bates, who's been dying to get to the free agent market, finally does. Signs of the Falcons. And the last one, late last evening, but a huge one, Dalvin Tomlinson gets paid to shore up the interior of the Cleveland Browns defensive line. Barry, which one of these? Uh, and I guess if you want to pick Payne, you can. Those sticks out to you. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm happy they, they, they kept Payne here. But uh, to, me, to me, Hargrave, like it just seems unfair that the Niners add him. Like, you know, as, I mean, the Niners are going to be insane. one of the best defenses in the NFL regardless and then they add Hargrave to both like I don't want to block that team like I don't want to have to no. block a, against the Niners like to me that was just I, the Ramsey move is also great like just I love everything that the Dolphins have done on the defensive side of the ball but Hargrave going to the Niners just seems with legit unfair I'm yep. with you Jay what about you to me it's Ramsey the fact that you have Ramsey Xavier and Howard will be better he was banged up all of last year alongside like Wilkins and Phillips and Fangio like that team is absolutely loaded on defense and their offenses can be ex as explosive as anyone so right now they're 14 to 1 to win the AFC the Dolphins and they might have a top 5 defense and top 5 offense like they got longer odds than the Chargers they've got almost twice the odds of your New York Jets which is too big of a gap for me like they could be a, a juggernaut yeah, one last one for me, guys. Dalvin Tomlinson going to the Browns. That interior yes. was bad yes. last yep. year. Miles Garrett needs some help on the inside there. Tomlinson was the most balanced player of the defensive lineman available. He's an excellent run defender, has some juice as a pass rusher. So the Browns solve a monster need late on day one of free agency. Hey, it's Matthew Berry from NBC Sports and Rotoworld.com. Just want to thank you so much for watching what you just watched, or at least being too lazy to click out of it after the you know autoplay just kept it going. So either way. Thank you so much for just letting it scroll by your screen. And now I'd like to ask you respectfully, 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 okay? Respectfully, please subscribe to the NFL on NBC YouTube channel for the latest NFL news, fantasy headlines from Rotor World, and betting analysis from NBC Sports Edge.